Our next video on chemistry is a closer look at the common elements. So here we have the same periodic table. Again, we understand a little bit about the layout of the table. But now what I've done is I've filled in the first 36 elements on the periodic table, and those are not all of the more common ones or commonly known ones. We've missed uh, lead and gold and mercury and so forth, which are further down on the periodic table. But at least if we're going to study chemistry, and I always recommend that you try to memorize at least some of these, if not most, or maybe all of these first 36 elements, because it really makes it a lot easier to deal with, with uh, the equations and everything that you're going to be have, that you're going to have to deal with later. So let's go through them just as a reminder. The first one up here, which has a single proton nucleus, is hydrogen. It ends up to be the most common element in the universe. Three quarters of the visible universe is made up of hydrogen. And then the other quarter is made up of helium, almost the other quarter. And a very small smidgen of the universe is made up of all the other elements on the periodic table. So these are the two ones that consist of, most of the universe consists of just the hydrogen and the helium. Matter of fact, our sun is 99% hydrogen and helium. Anyway, so we have hydrogen here, we have helium there, then we go to the next row here, we have lithium and beryllium, boron, carbon, now carbon is the element that's kind of the basis of life because it's such, it's a molecule that makes all these chain bonds possible. And so if you want to study organic chemistry, you'll of course learn a whole lot more about carbon and what it can do. Nitrogen, which is the main component in our uh, atmosphere, we breathe mostly nitrogen. And oxygen is the second most abundant component of our atmosphere. So nitrogen and oxygen together form almost 99% of the Earth's atmosphere, and that's prim primarily what we breathe in. Of course, it's the oxygen our body is after, because oxygen is used for the chemical reactions that we need in our bodies in order to utilize food, in order to have the energy to, to live. Then we have fluorine, fluorine and then neon, of course. People know neon as a gas that we use in neon lights and very colorful lighting in cities. Uh, sodium, magnesium are like salts. We have aluminum, which is a common metal. Silicon, which is kind of has the same properties as carbon, carbon, and is the silicon and oxygen together are the main components that form sand and rock. So if you're going to make uh, uh, well, I'll go in a little bit further. Uh, we have phosphorus here, um, that we use that in matches. Uh, we have sulfur. Chlorine is a very corrosive uh, material. We use that to uh, keep things from growing in our swimming pools. It's a good cleaning product. So again, the reason that, of that is, is because it has such a strong attraction to that last electron that it needs to fill up its valence band that uh, it goes out and, and reacts readily with almost anything. And we have, of course, argon gas. Here we have uh, potassium, it's another uh, salt that our body needs. We have calcium, calcium of course we need for our bones. We have scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, so now we're going in, getting into more of the common metals. Manganese, iron of course is the most abundant uh, iron or metal in the universe. Uh, much of what we find at the center of the earth and in our earth's crust is iron. Uh, cobalt and nickel are also very common elements, uh, common metals. We have copper zinc, gallium, germanium, which is also something that acts a lot like silicon. Silicon and germanium are used a lot in electronic devices because they're just perfect for that kind of thing. Of course, arsenic, something we want to stay away from, very poisonous. Selenium, bromine, and krypton. Yes, krypton, something that makes Superman very weak, is actually a noble gas and not really contained within a solid matter. But I guess they like the name, so they use krypton. Anyway, those are the first 36 elements on the periodic table. Later on, we'll go through some of the other ones as well. But I would recommend that if you're going to study chemistry, that you do your best, that you're able to take a blank periodic table like this and actually fill in the blank spots for at least the first 36 to help you uh, know a little bit more about these elements, where they're on the periodic table, and then you can also kind of guess as why they do what they do and how they react, because that, the location indicates the properties which again is determined by how the electrons are stacked up in the orbitals around the nucleus of the atoms. So there's a little introduction to the more common elements on the periodic table.